Hi, this is the type of falafel I grew up eating, without bread or salad, just 100% falafel. If you're still buying your falafel from a shop, maybe it's time to try this recipe at home. The whole process of making falafel is actually quite fast, but you will need some planning up front. And by that I mean soaking the chickpeas for 8 hours or overnight. I have here 400 grams of organic chickpeas, submerged in water and left on the counter overnight. Congratulations, you're halfway there. Please don't use canned chickpeas, that's not an option. The chickpeas will double in size, so make sure to put enough water. I'm gonna rinse them quickly and set them aside while preparing the rest of the ingredients. For the greens you will need 60 grams of fresh parsley, 20 grams of fresh coriander, one medium sized onion chopped into cubes, four cloves of garlic, one third of a chili. I'll throw these greens in a food processor and run it until there are no big pieces left. If you don't have a food processor, you might still have one of these from your past life. It's how falafel were originally made and probably still being made in many places. So you can use that and remember to run the ingredients through it twice. Now it's time to add the chickpeas. I'm adding them in two patches. This might take 5 to 15 minutes to process. The processing time depends on your processor and the type of chickpeas you're using. I'll add around 2 tablespoons of water to help the machine. Make sure to mix the ingredients every now and then. By the end of the process I'll add the spices, 2 spoons of coriander powder, 1 teaspoon of cumin powder, quarter teaspoon of black pepper and half teaspoon of salt. These are the baseline spices. We will confirm the taste during the frying process. Depending on your ingredients, you might need to fine tune the spices according to your taste. This is the consistency I'm looking for. A little grainy, not mushy and full of color. Now that the paste is ready, you can either fry it directly or freeze it. I divided the amount into two. Each is enough for three people. You can divide it on three and each will be enough for two. When you're ready to fry and after you have defrosted the falafel paste, I'll add one teaspoon of coriander seeds, two teaspoons of sesame seeds, salt to your taste, and one quarter teaspoon of baking soda. We will be frying these in four ways. Deep fry, low oil fry, air fry, and baking them in the oven. If you're air frying or putting them in the oven, you're gonna have to omit the baking soda. Its purpose is to puff up the falafel once it touches the oil, so that will not work in an air fryer or in the oven. To shape the falafel, if you're like me, then you might have invested in one of these falafel tools. For the other 99.9999% of the planet, you can shape it with your hand like so. Try to make it a little flat, not a ball like, so that the center is also cooked. To decide on how well your spices are adjusted, I suggest doing a test run by frying one piece of falafel first and then adding more salt if needed. I usually use my fingers in measuring spices, which gives me control on how much spices I release into the dish. Try developing this skill even by measuring the ingredients first, then putting them using your fingers. First method is deep frying, which is the classic way of making falafel. Unless you have an industrial type deep fryer, I suggest finding the smallest diameter and deepest pan you have to reduce the amount of oil you'll be using. Before you drop your first falafel in, throw a little piece in the oil. This is how you test your oil temperature. If it's bubbling and then floating quickly, then you're ready. Put your falafel in and you'll notice that they will sink to the bottom then start floating after a few seconds. This is a good sign. Here's one done by hand, just put it in slowly not to splash and burn your hand. Flip the falafel to make sure they're well cooked on both sides. Once they have this beautiful brown color, it's time to fish them out. Move them to a paper towel to remove any excess oil. The second method is frying in little oil. We will use almost the same idea from deep frying. Don't forget to test the oil. This time you're gonna flip the falafel halfway through to have even color on both sides. Once they're done, move them as well to a paper towel. I almost always go for this method. I prefer the texture of the deep frying, but I find it unsustainable to use that much oil for a patch of falafel unless I'm making a feast. If you're using one of the first two methods, make sure to discard the leftover oil properly. Method 3 is air frying. I first like to brush a tiny amount of oil at the bottom of my air fry tray and run it at 200 degrees for 3 minutes. Then carefully place the falafel and brush them with little oil. Then run the fryer again for 10 to 15 minutes at 200 degrees. Make sure to flip them after 8 minutes or so. This is the color I'm going for. More than that, the falafel will dry out. This is actually a very nice outcome and probably the fastest option. 
Method 4 is baking them in the oven. I preheated the oven to 220 degrees and brushed some oil on oven paper. Then placed the falafel on top and brushed them with oil. Check the bottom side of the falafel and make sure to flip them to have even sides. You can eliminate the oil completely from methods 3 and 4 or even method 2 if you use a reliable non-stick pan. But the falafel will be drier and life is short so a little oil is okay after all. Here are the four types side by side. They all look and taste great. My favorite still is the deep fried ones and this is the reason. It's crunchy on the outside, soft and airy on the inside and that's how it's originally made. To make a falafel sandwich we'll need some tahini. I recommend buying the ready-made tahini paste from any Middle Eastern shop. Processing the sesame seeds at home is a time and energy consuming process. I'm using two large spoons of tahini paste and to that I'll add salt, cumin, black pepper, lemon squeeze, white vinegar. Add a little of each and mix them, then add water gradually and mix until you reach the desired consistency. I like mine a little on the thick side so it doesn't run out of the falafel sandwich. Give it a little taste and add more spices if needed. The classic falafel sandwich consists of four ingredients. Pita bread, which I'll put a video of soon, tahini, falafel and cucumber tomato salad. If you don't have the time and energy to make your pita bread or can't find them in stores, try using ready tortilla bread. It's a great alternative. I'll eat this sandwich any day with no complaints. But if you like to make the best of what life gives you, here's what you're gonna do. Get a pita or tortilla bread, tahini, falafel, fried eggplants, fried cauliflower, hummus, full or fava beans, pickled red cabbage, greens, chopped mint, more tahini, and this is what I call the rock rock. Try making falafel at home, experiment with the recipe, let me know if you would like to see videos of these or if you are watching this in the future then click on the links you will see on this video. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and as always enjoy the b-roll.